We're driving a 2020 Ford F-250 Super Duty. I did a full review on Kelly Blue Book. So in this video, we're gonna dial in very specifically to the family-friendly attributes of the Super Duty. And coming up a little bit later, I'm gonna blow my wife's mind with big numbers. But first, information explosion. Did have your mind blown? <laughs> um, yes. For $500, sweetie, uh -oh. tell me the torque figure of the diesel engine that's powering this Super Duty. Let me give you a taste. Torque. Ah! <laughs> I'm glad the brakes are equally as good. <laughs> <laughs> your guess? I don't know enough that I'm probably going to say something absurd. Ideally, yes. 330. That correct figure is 1,050 pound-feet of torque. What? I've never even heard of that before. My mind is blown. There are a lot more numbers that we need to dig into that will uh, continue to blow your mind. But before we get to that, interior. It's very big. It is very big. Size is not a problem from a family-friendly perspective. Uh, what about the design? Does this do anything for you? more stylish than I would expect from a vehicle with this kind of utility. I have to point out though that this is the limited trim, okay. which means you're going to find a lot more actual leather. This is a suede headliner. The material quality in this version of the Super Duty is uh, much, much nicer than you'd find in the base version. Consequently, the price reflects that. I'll get to that in a little bit. More mind-blowing stuff. <laughs> One quality it does have that supercars have in common with it is that there's buttons that I don't know what they do and I probably shouldn't push. What the heck is this? Those are the uh, upfitter switches that I would personally make great use of. I, I'd like to have a single switch where um, you can turn it on and then through like a train horn it blasts Smash Mouth All-Star. <laughs> ah, this guy's clearly crazy. <laughs> I'm getting out of the way. Decide. Hey now! You can decide how to utilize those switches. Back when we owned Mini Coopers, uh, the little toggles were really cool. This is a much manlier version of toggles. Super manly. Yeah, super manly. Prepare to have your mind blown yet again. Uh, notice there are three different places you can adjust the lumbar, low, Ooh. medium, and high. And at, at maximum extension, it is generous. Those are also massaging seats. If you wanted to haul a bunch of stuff and uh, be lightly pampered. I won't tell your friends. Don't, don't tell your buddies that you've been pampered in your sweet Super Duty. I like when they have things like lumbar, lumbar support and headrests at different levels because I'm so short that often if it's designed for a normal sized human, it's really hitting me in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Rear window test. Yay, full pass. Armrest test. Even height armrest, uh, softly padded. Uh, I can hold a very comfortable eight and four. That's two elbows up. Whoa. Whoa, yeah. Running through our normal roster of family-friendly traits. Child access is theoretically dicey, but this one has the power-operated running boards, so she climbed aboard without much issue. It's so wide and perfectly placed. It is actually really helpful for me buckling her in as well. Much easier than an average-sized SUV, surprisingly. Who would have guessed? Uh, the latch points are not labeled, but they're just sort of out there and accessible, so very easy to connect uh, seats. And then the upper tethers, there are these um, little liter literal tethers at the top of the seat that are just exposed, so it's very easy to connect the tether up top. For some people, mass equals safety. If for your family, you equate mass with safety, this has more than three tons of safety available to you. In the back seat, there are vents and there are USB ports, which is great for uh, children of all ages. And rear seat space, at least in the Super Crew, is fantastic. So if you have like three teenagers, you could absolutely use this as your family wagon. Sweetie, what do we think? Is the uh, 2020 Ford Super Duty family friendly? Family friendly with one caveat. I don't know where I'm storing my stroller, like all the crap I decided to bring along when we first had Trixie. That's a, a great observation. I might suggest that you could put almost put it in here. You could probably store two human heads, not that that's a good standard for how much you want to store stuff, but... Two human heads and a breast pump. Family friendly. <laughs> I wish we had a stunt stroller, but you might be able to store a stroller underneath 
the rear seat oh. because the box under there collapses. And if you wanted this to be your family rig, tonneau cover. And then you've got all the totally. space in the uh, bed to utilize. I'm gonna say this is a very family Yay. friendly truck. If you were to go down one cab size to the super cab, you'd still have a very family friendly vehicle. You go to the regular cab, just a three seat bench, um, probably less accommodating for a family, but you know, uh, you make work what you need to make work. Inside here, there are so many little nooks. A smallish glove compartment, but a supplemental glove hold up there. So you can have your entire glove collection right there. <laughs> the door storage is outrageous. It's all these little bins and all these little spots. There's so many places to put stuff. Center console, as we mentioned, is huge. And then look, there's dedicated spots to hold pens. And then there's this coin organizer that Thank you can pop you. in here. I was like, what is this for? You've got map slots to next to your leg here. Um, are you a hoarder? Welcome to your new vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> it can certainly handle the payload. The Ford Super Duty, hoarder's welcome. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, please do. At 50,000 subs, I'm gonna tell you a terrible dark secret about my hair. Ooh, oh, what could it be? Sweetie knows, other sweetie kinda knows, but you don't know. <laughs> See you at 50,000 subs. Style! I'm reminded of a quote that was attributed to Napoleon. Quantity has a quality of its own. Mm. In the same way that the Mini Cooper that we drove uh, through Germany was uniquely engaging visually because of its small size. The Super Duty has a, uh, a quality just by its mass that gives it this um, kind of presence. What do you think? I kept measuring things with the size of my forearm. <laughs> like the badge on the front, the size of my forearm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of badge up there. The so, mirrors. It's a, it's a badge. The mirrors. Oh, you think the mirrors are cool? Check this out. <laughs> they just got bigger. They just People, got bigger. They just Bigger. <laughs> now remember, when you see the Super Duty in nature, you'll want to make yourself appear bigger. <laughs> no, it is impossible to outbig the Super Duty. Okay, Play yeah. Dead. <laughs> Expose your underbelly as a sign of submission. Yes. Uh, a few things I'll note: uh, the grill is appropriately massive uh, and chrome, though I would say a little bit more subdued than what Chevy and GMC are doing right now with their heavy-duty pickup trucks. Uh, the other thing I like is the window cut line. Notice how it goes down towards the front. Uh, reminiscent of... A lady's hip? Reminiscent of a lady's hip is not what they said in the, uh, <laughs> the design meeting. Probably uh, going for something a little more like their commercial trucks. I think overall it looks like what a large heavy duty pickup truck ought to look like. Do you want to see what I'm driving or flying between YouTube reviews? Follow me on Instagram. Future Evy has put my handle down here and also Future Evy can put present Evie's handle down here <laughs> if you want to follow her on Instagram just to see behind the scenes stuff of what our family's up to. In motion! Bounce, 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 bounce. If you don't need a heavy duty pickup truck and the abilities that a heavy duty pickup truck would afford you, there are better ways to get five people to Dairy Queen. <laughs> you remember when they used to make those Sundays with the uh, little baseball uh, caps? I wonder if they still make those, that sounds nice. We can eat them in our truck bed. Yeah. Oh, God, that takes me back. This is another one of those vehicles I am so grateful that I am not driving through traffic. You've anticipated uh, what's coming up a little bit later. No. No. That's right. Evie's going to drive this thing. No. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not on the street. I will definitely kill someone. Well, that's a hell of a tease. <laughs> what I will say about size is that the mass of a Super Duty uh, or any other heavy duty pickup truck um, is more or less appropriate depending on where you live. Uh, we live in California, maybe it doesn't make quite so much sense, but if you live in Central California actually, then you know there's a lot of uh, pickup truck folk and uh, society is made to accommodate larger vehicles there. Judge accordingly. One of the surprises in driving the Super Duty is that it feels far more manageable than you might have expected. For example, I don't know anything about what this is, but I'm going to turn in here. You know what? I have inadvertently breezed onto the Ram lot. I am in enemy territory here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> This is a perfect opportunity though, so I'm gonna back this thing up. Uh, we have pretty good visibility. I can see out all the windows and uh, view out is fine. Steering, uh, the adaptive steering system uses an electric motor to change the steering ratio depending on speed. So when you're driving at very slow speeds, like here in this parking lot, it takes fewer turns to get lock to lock with oh, the steering. And so cool. it's very cool, very manageable efforts, and it's easy to, uh, to steer you know, at low speed. And then the ratio, uh, changes at higher speeds, so it takes more turns, so it feels more stable. 
departing from a stop, it's a great opportunity to point out that the diesel engine, it delivers power in a very un-diesel way. Oftentimes with diesel engines, it's like a, an initial hit of power, then kind of, uh, it sort of lags as it comes up on revs. And because this diesel is paired with a 10-speed automatic transmission, it does a brilliant job keeping that diesel in its happy rev range. So instead of having that sort of like wheezy uh, upper RPM power, it just feels like smooth propulsion. And then if you floor it, needless full throttle acceleration, Whee! takes a little bit of a beat, uh, you know, for the turbos to spool up, spool up, spool up. <laughs> but uh, when you floor it, the diesel moves. Woo-wee! I got a wee out of the child. The diesel's doing a primo job. And now because this channel is all about expanding our personal boundaries, my sweetie's gonna drive. Okay, here we are. How's it going? Well, I was very impressed about how much you could move the seat up so I can actually see over the hood now, which is cool. A little behind the scenes secret, I had to move that camera up a little bit to accommodate <laughs> your added uh, you know, headspace. This is much more, oh God. You're fine, you're fine, you're fine. <laughs> it's much more manageable than I would have thought. So the size is uh, a little bit uh, intimidating, but uh, anything else you're noticing? This pillar seems to be in my way visually. In defense of the pillar, you're very close to it. Yes. <laughs> so so that, that, that might have something to do with it. This would be good. We've got a U-turn opportunity. You can see how it is to, uh, so just go a little further um, straight before you make your U-turn. Uh, okay. To give you adequate clearance, you can go into that part of the, part of the road. Mm -mm, stop. Reverse. Yeah, I would have gone a little bit further forward. Sorry, there I don't know go. what I'm doing. Here comes a car. That's fine. You're clear. There we go. That um, turning ratio was helpful. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> when I was. <laughs> but did I feel manageable by effort? By effort, for sure. While this might be a little bit intimidating for you now, uh, mm -hmm. size is something that you adapt to. Mm -hmm. Get out of here, Iguana. <laughs> you adapt to what you drive. When you drove the Mini, it felt very normal. And then when you got into the CRV, which is a compact SUV, it felt overwhelmingly huge. It did. So the exact same thing would happen with this. Oh. All right, so you've had the Super Duty experience. Are you all right? <laughs> it's okay. All right, back to our normal positions. Ah. In total, the Ford Super Duty is a truck built to do truck stuff. If you don't want something that drives like a truck, don't buy this truck. Truck, truck, truck. 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 Emotion factor. Is invincibility an emotion? Ooh, I'm going to say yes. Well then, the emotion factor of the Ford Super Duty is strong. There is something about the height and the mass and the sound and the aesthetic that makes you feel just a little bit more important, <laughs> or at least uh, a little bit more impervious as you're driving the Super Duty around. Uh, emotion factor is not merely about uh, looks or driving demeanor, it's also what can the vehicle do this vehicle can do some amazing things. Uh, you can tow a trailer, you can tow a boat, tow a race car to some very, very fun places. To me, the Super Duty has a very strong emotional component just by virtue of its capabilities. What do you think, emotion? I totally agree. Like, I'm not going to do any of those things, but <laughs> they do instill a sense of possibility. Mm -hmm. You certainly could if you wanted to, yes. which you don't. If you're moved emotionally to shop for a Super Duty of your own, click the link in the description to check out some listings from Kelly Blue Book. Remarks! Okay, so the engine we're driving is the diesel, but there are two gasoline engines. There's a standard 6.2 liter V8 and an optional 7.3 liter V8. Which, by the way, those are displacement numbers you are not used to hearing. Those are very, very big, <laughs> totally. more mind-blowing numbers. The basic engine is, is plenty powerful. Um, step up to the 7.3 liter is only about $2,000, which sounds very reasonable. How much do you think it is to go from that basic engine to the diesel engine? Six grand. <laughs> You're getting closer, actually. 10500 Okay. That sounds like a lot of money, but you got to think about what it's capable mm. of. The diesel engine is the engine that will give you the maximum tow capabilities if you're looking to Super Duty, and I certainly hope you are. So if you're towing conventionally, uh, Super Duty with a diesel engine can tow up to 24,200 pounds. <laughs> and if you use a gooseneck, which is um, you know like a trailer that's got the little uh, part that comes over into the bed, 37,000 pounds is the max tow on the Super Duty. I did some math. That would allow us to tow the helicopter, my motorcycle, and your CRV, and still have more than 30,000 pounds left. What? Is your mind blown? 
Uh, my mind is blown. What are people doing with these things? Whatever they want. <laughs> hey, what would you tow with 37,000 pounds of capacity? Tell us in the comments. Yeah, there is always a comment section. You mentioned buttons, you don't know what they do. That one right there, with like <laughs> the little like, poof, that's the uh, engine braking function. You can set it to automatic, and then it'll automatically use the engine to slow the vehicle down when towing on a downhill grade. There are a zillion configurations of Super Duty. Uh, if you go to the configurator, just check out the Kelly Blue Book video that I did with the Super Duty. Let's see, there's three cabs, there's two different bed lengths, 250, 350, and 450 variants with varying uh, capabilities, dual rear wheels, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. I don't know what you want to do with your truck. <laughs> there is a version of the Super Duty that will happily do it. By the way, I mentioned four-wheel drive. Tell, tell me in the comment section if there's a really good reason why this should have manual locking hubs, because the last time I saw that was like my parents' old 4Runner. I'm imagining that if you're trying to tow a boat off of a wet ramp, that if, if you just go out there, you manually lock the hubs, uh, then that's gonna give you that extra bit of traction. But I'm just not exactly sure why those would be manual rather than automatic locking hubs. One of the features maybe you appreciate the most are power adjustable pedals. Mm -hmm. So it would have been much more awkward while you were driving were you not able to move those pedals back because you got those uh, you know tiny little Hanna-Barbera legs. I say in love. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. That adjustability with the power pedals, I think is really nice. It puts you in a much more comfortable position. Can you do me a favor? Can you move your uh, recorder over there? And then can you lift this up? Hold that right there, watch. <gasps> what? Yay! I was just thinking that one of the shortcomings of this um, front cab situation is that there are not enough drink holders and they are not of girthy enough size. Look, that's a very girthy cup holder. <laughs> Damn it, get out of here! <laughs> Did you notice there's two more right back here? Oh. So literally within my grasp, I've got access to six cup holders if I want. But this little sliding mechanism, so simple, so clever. That's super clever. Yeah, I, I really like, like it. that. Yeah, it's really cool. We talked a little bit about the cargo nooks here in the cab a little bit earlier. Uh, there is supplemental cargo in the box beneath the rear seat. So you can open that box, flops on out. You can lock the seats in a lower position. It should be a secure location. It is not. You can reach a hand right on through. Look, we got a power sliding rear window back there. Sometimes you gotta ventilate the child. I like it. Behind that rear window, you've got a bed. You've got a six and three quarter uh, bed length and an eight foot bed length. There's a little bit less innovation than I might have expected. Uh, like there's the multi pro tailgate from GMC that does a zillion different things, uh, you know, an integrated step. This is a less innovated bed situation. You've got Ford's tailgate step, which makes it easy to climb aboard. Plus, when you're standing up there, you get to look like a wizard. Ford Super Duty, wizards welcome. <laughs> so we got wizards and we've got orders. Yeah. None shall pass. Personally, I, I kind of prefer Chevy's solution of putting corner steps on the bumpers. I think that's a pretty neat way to get in, but um, this one has the spray in bed liner and some tie down points. Uh, that's, that's fine. I like the fact that there is a light back there. So if you need to illuminate your bed, just turn it on and you got some LED lights. That seems super useful. There's also a light under the hood. I don't think that it has any negative implications on reliability. If for any reason you're looking at the engine, you will have a light to guide you. <laughs> Blasting through technology, we've got an eight inch infotainment screen, uh, it's Sync 3, it works just fine. By size, it feels a little small just because the rest of the vehicle is so large. That's a good point. Other technological enhancements to make your life easier and safer. Uh, this has lane departure warning, it vibrates through the steering wheel, but there are so many vibrations already coming through the steering wheel that it has to be very, very strong vibrations. So it's like blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Also available on the Super Duty, uh, dynamic cruise control, which is nice, especially for trailing long distances. Just set the cruise control, it'll slow down if the vehicle ahead of you is a little bit slow. And then the blind spot warning system in the Super Duty will take into account a trailer. That's so great. There you are, you're passing a very, very slow Camry. I know that's a little redundant. Uh, the blind spot warning system will let you know when you're well clear. And then uh, it's got a really good mm -hmm. camera system. It's beyond just a normal 360 camera. So if you're trying to like connect a gooseneck or a fifth wheel, then uh, you can just see right in the bed where it's gonna connect. Super that's convenient. Great. And then they also have an option where you can uh, install your own camera on the back of your trailer, and then it'll be uh, visible through the system. If you plan to tow, 
This has a lot of accommodations, uh, so you won't have that terrible moment where you uh, scrape off half the trailer uh, while uh, you know driving through the gas station, and then you have to explain that to your family that you've now just disappointed, and then they will hold it over your head for decades to come. Have you damaged a trailer on a family vacation and then had shame hanging over you? Tell us in the comment section. Let's talk about price. Base price for a Super Duty with a regular cab, Super Elemental vinyl interior, right about 35 grand, including $1,600 in destination charges. Let's say you had big towing demands and you wanted to go live your tow life, your yeah. best tow life. What do you think this costs? How about I just double it? 60. Oh, sweetie. No? No. No, you should have tripled it. 88 what? grand. <laughs> Did, did we get one last mind blown in before the end of the video? Wow. I have no minds left to blow. Woo! <laughs> that guan, guan is getting a workout. <laughs> I think the way it works is that people will spend a lot of money on a truck like this and then hold on to it for a long time. You can spend almost 100 grand on, on one of these if you really load it out. But if you extend that investment over, you know, like a 10 year ownership period, then the actual per year cost is much, much lower. So I'm much like a Costco rotisserie chicken. I don't know how they, that all pencils, <laughs> but I do know that it's a lot of capability. And so consequently there's a large price. Hey, did we miss any remarks? Tell us in the comment section, synopsis. So thinking about the essence of the Ford Super Duty, uh, it is spectacular. It's big, uh, bigger than most certainly, and uh, it's, it's ready to work. What is the synopsis of the Ford Super Duty? RuPaul. You better work. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a better synopsis? Tell us in the comment <laughs> section. Hey, if you like this video, be sure to hit the like button, the little thumbs up, we'd appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed, please do. At 100,000 subs, I'm gonna review a windowless white van. That's gonna be a big old time. And I wanna just say thank you to everybody who has subscribed as of late. Uh, we're seeing steady growth and we're seeing good views and wonderful comments. And we've built like a really good little community. Like everybody seems to be really nice. So thank you so for being nice. wonderful people. Hey, high fives. You wanna high five? Uh, <laughs> come get your i5. <laughs>